Hi! You may have been told or experienced that aluminium is not magnetic, but that's not the whole truth. In reality, aluminium, also known as aluminum, has not only one, but two different ways of reacting to a magnet. Let's explore both of them and debunk the misconception that eddy currents always create a magnetic field repelling a magnet. Though before we get started, I have a question for you. Which one of these cylinders rolls off a magnet the slowest? The one made of aluminum, copper or silver? We'll soon find out. Big neodymium magnets are not toys. Their bone-crushing power demands responsible attention at all times. Is aluminium magnetic? A simple question often answered by an equally simple no. It is considered non-magnetic because it is not attracted to a magnet, like the soda can. Sorry, this is a steel soda can with a lot of magnetic iron. Here is a more common one made of aluminium. Yeah, I agree. It does not seem to be attracted to the magnet. Unless you put it on a water bath and use a very strong magnet and some patience. Then it actually is attracted to a magnet. Not enough to stick to the magnet, so in our everyday lives it is adequate to just call it non-magnetic. However, to a scientist, Aluminium is called paramagnetic, since it is weakly attracted to a magnet, but can't be a permanent magnet in itself. Alright, this is the first way in which aluminium will react to a magnet despite being considered non-magnetic. It is weakly attracted to a steady magnet because it is weakly paramagnetic. The second way is much stronger and more spectacular. Back on the water bath, this time with a handheld magnet. Since the alucan is paramagnetic, it will be attracted to the magnet, right? Wrong! Now it is all of a sudden repelled by the magnet. Even quite strongly compared to the attraction from before. But only until I start moving the magnet away from the can. Now the alucan is attracted by the magnet. What is going on? Well, the key difference is the movement of the magnet, compared to the steady magnet needed to demonstrate the paramagnetic attraction. Aluminium is a good electrical conductor, almost four times as good as iron. And if you move a conductor and a magnet close to each other, you cause something called electromagnetic induction. The change in magnetic field going through the alucan generates electric currents swirling around in the aluminium. These are known as eddy currents, and as any electrical current, they have their own magnetic field. The soda can basically turns into a weak electromagnet when the magnet is moving near it. This eddy current effect can be strong. Watch what happens when I drop a sheet of aluminium on a big magnet. Awesome! It may appear like the magnet is slowing down time, but this is played in real time. Why is the fall of the alu sheet slowed down by the eddy currents? You may have heard that eddy currents create a repelling magnetic field. Here, the alu sheet is falling onto the south pole of the magnet. The eddy currents generate a south pole on the side of the sheet facing the magnet. Since opposite poles attract and like poles repel, the sheet and magnet are repelling each other. But only as long as the sheet or magnet is moving. Otherwise, the eddy currents and the magnetic field in the yellow sheet disappear. This slow fall is a balance between gravity pulling the sheet down and eddy currents repelling the sheet up away from the magnet. You may already have experienced this eddy current breaking effect at the end of a roller coaster ride. If I make a pendulum of the yellow can, I can break the motion by using a magnet. And if I place the magnet vertically, the repelling effect of the eddy currents is clearly visible. Nice! Without heating the magnet, the can is bumped away from the magnet by the repulsion. And a ring of aluminium is much more reluctant to fall over when placed on top of a magnet.
Okay, from watching these experiments, I understand why there is a misconception about eddy currents always creating a repelling force. A pose is even mentioned twice in Lenz's law on induction. However, a pose only equals repel half of the time. This experiment, covered in two old videos of mine, wouldn't work if the eddy currents could only repel. The magnet would simply just repel off the copper and fall down. And sometimes the soda can is attracted by a moving magnet. This may look like it happens because of moving air. But if I put the can inside an airtight container and even suck the air out of it, the effects remain the same. Repelled by an approaching magnet. Attracted by a magnet moving away. And slightly attracted to a steady magnet from paramagnetism. So why is the can strongly attracted by a magnet moving away? As mentioned earlier, eddy currents are generated by a change in the magnetic field. This change can however be either an increase or decrease in field strength. When the north pole of a magnet approaches a conductor, the increasing magnetic field in the conductor causes the eddy currents to swirl counterclockwise creating a repelling north pole facing the magnet's north pole. The opposing part being, the induced magnetic field is trying to counteract the increase in magnetic field by having opposite polarity, subtracting in the overall magnetic field. But if the north pole of a magnet leaves a conductor, the decreasing field causes a switch in electric polarity and the eddy currents swirl clockwise instead creating an attracting south pole facing the magnet's north pole. The opposing part being, the induced magnetic field is trying to counteract the decrease in magnetic field by adding its own of same polarity. The attracting variance explains why the magnet is sticking to the non-magnetic copper here. After a short message, I will let the free element cylinders roll off a magnet. Have you guessed which one is the slowest due to eddy currents? A big, big thanks to all my patrons. Thank you so much for helping out. It's really appreciated and important for a news channel with monthly quality uploads like mine. For just a dollar a month, you can help me out too and get full access to all my posts on patreon.com. Link to my Patreon page in the description. Thank you. Time to test the cylinders. Here are some data on them. They are all of high purity, so we can assume they will react like the pure elements. Copper is almost 60% better at conducting electricity than aluminium, so the eddy currents in it will be almost 60% stronger. And silver is even better at 6% more conductivity than copper. In fact, silver is the best conductor of all elements at room temperature. However, both copper and silver are much heavier than the lightweight aluminium. Could matter in the balance between eddy currents and gravity. Actually, let me just test the densities of the cylinders to verify they are what they claim to be. Not bad. Their measured densities are very close to the official specs for the elements. Only the copper one is a little off, but it makes sense when comparing its edges to the other two. I didn't account for its lack of volume in the beveled edges. And it sure is copper colored. Let's try it first, after a reference run with a non-magnetic, non-conductive plastic piece. It rolls off in half a second, like the magnet is just a piece of metal. How about the copper cylinder? Nice! The breaking effect of eddy currents is strong in the copper. Makes sense for a great conductor. How about the even better conducting silver? Seems close to the copper. And finally, the aluminium one. Oh, 
that's amazing. Again, the magnet seems to slow down time. Click like if you will chuckle the next time you hear aluminium will not react to a magnet because it is not magnetic. Aluminium is by far the slowest from its combination of being a good conductor and lightweight. Did you guess right? That's all for now, but make sure you are subscribed for my upcoming videos. Meanwhile, you can watch my video on how even flames react to a magnet. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.